So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the introduction. Why do we complete the square? What's the point of it? And then we're going to start very basic with some examples of just how to use the technique of completing the square. And in the next video, we'll move on to actually solving equations by completing the square. So let's go straight into it with the introduction and why do we actually do this. Later on, you'll learn that you can draw, if you don't already know, a picture of a, uh, a quadratic equation and you get this curve. And there's a few interesting features that we're going to look at on this curve. You'll notice here I've, no I've noted some points. The first point I'm going to highlight is this point here and this point here. So those two points are where we cut the x-axis. So it's a x-intercept. So in other words, that would be, if you look at the axes, you've got a y-axis going up and down the way, and an x-axis going across. That's just where y is nothing. It's not going up the y-axis. So it's going to y equals 0. The next point I'm going to notice is the, this point here. You'll notice this is a curve and it turns at that point, so that is called the turning point. There's a few other points that I want to note. Here at minus 3 is on the y-axis, so you'll notice on the y-axis I've not went along the x-axis. So that point there is called the y-intercept. And it's when x equals 0 because I'm not going along the x-axis at all. The last point we could notice is this dotted line going down the middle. If I just highlight that a bit. This dotted line going down the middle is, makes the parabola symmetrical. So it's the line of symmetry. And what completing the square does is it allows us to take this equation here, x squared minus 2x minus 3, and put it into a form which will allow us to get the turning point quite easily and where it cuts the x axis quite easily. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. If I move this out of the way, you'll see when we're finished, you'll get something that says y equals x minus 1 squared, take away 4. Notice this number, I'll, I'll point out a few numbers on this. You'll notice here we've got take away 4 at the end. And you'll notice that's also where the turning point is, minus 4. So that and that directly are the same, so it gives us a turning point pretty much straight away. Okay, let's move on to actually how do we go from y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 to y equals x minus 1 squared minus 4. How do we actually get there? So we'll start by looking at a, an example. In the previous video, if we had a question that says factorise x squared plus 10x plus 25, we would know we're looking for two numbers at times together to make 25, but add together to make 10. Now, if we were to do that, we would get an answer of x plus 5 and x plus 5. Same bracket times together, so it's the same as x plus 5 squared. That is a perfect square. It's x plus 5 squared. Which is great if, if, if you can do that, but most trinomials do not factorise to make a perfect square bracket. So if I had to factorise, say, a similar example, x squared plus 10x plus 23, well that's similar to, it's close to, x squared plus 10x plus 25 at the top, but I would have to take away 2 to make it 25 minus 2 is 23. But we've already seen the x, the x squared part plus the 10x plus 25 is x plus 5 squared. So that would equal x plus 5 squared, but then I would have, still have to take away the 2. So I'd have x plus 5 squared take away 2. And we're going to look at the method now in practice, how do we do that? So you should notice that to get from here to here, you're just halving this 10 to get the 5. 
So you get x plus 5 squared, half of 10 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25, that's the last number. So to go from here to here, half of 10 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25, so I need to take away 2 to get 23, okay? Let's look at another example. So example 1 says complete the square x squared plus 10x. So that's equal to x plus 5 squared. But 5 times 5 is 25 and you'll notice on the end here there is nothing. So I need to take away the extra 25 that I've just made. So the answer is x plus 5 squared, take away 25, and that is completing the square. Let's look at a second example. Example 2 says complete the square, y squared minus 16y. So again, we're looking to make that look like a square bracket, y, but now it's minus 8 squared, because half of 16 is 8, so that will give me my 16y, but you should notice it. 8 squared is 64, but there's nothing on the end, so I need to take away 64 to balance it up. So I get x minus 8, y minus 8 squared, take away 64. Let's look at an example where there is a number on the end, and also word it in a slightly different way. So example 3 says, right in the form, x plus a squared plus b, and state the values of a and b, m squared plus 8m plus 2. Now, this is just asking you to complete the square in a different way. x plus a squared plus b is the format of completing the square. So it's just asking you to complete the square. So whenever you see x plus a squared plus b, or x plus q squared plus r, or x plus anything squared plus anything, that's just the same as asking you to complete the square. So we're just going to complete the square. So if we look at the question, it's m squared plus 8m plus 2. So to complete the square on that, we do m plus 4 squared, because half of 8 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, so we're going to have to take away 16, like we did previously. But the only extra thing here is, there's the add 2. So since we've, we've got this add 2, we have to keep the add 2 in, so we add 2. And it's really now just a check, m plus 4 squared. Minus 16 add 2 is minus 14, so their final answer is take away 14. And now we need to actually answer the question, state the values of a and b. So a equals 4, that's the first number, and b equals minus 14. Notice that although the question said state x plus a plus b, a or B could obviously still be negative numbers as well, so we, do, we can have a negative answer and that's okay. All right. Okay, one final example. Example 4 says complete the square x squared minus 12x minus 3. So you should be getting the idea of the method now. We do x minus, well half of 12 is 6, keep the same sign, squared. We square the 6, 6 6 is 36, so we immediately take away what we've just squared, minus 36, but we've still got minus 3 to go. So the final answer is x minus 6, all squared. Minus 36, take away 3, just be careful, is minus 39. And there's our final answer, nice and simple. This is Clown here from Clown Maths. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Next lesson we'll be looking at further expanding on completing the square and looking how we can use completing the square to solve quadratic equations. Thanks very much for watching and take care and stay safe.